Unplugging is key to performing in the office. We've got a lot of gifts in our presentation that they are going to love. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an experiment. We'll see. <laughs> it's an experiment, but we promise to keep you engaged. Welcome, everyone, to Denver Startup Week. I'm saying welcome because yeah. this is you. Unfortunately, my first panel I've been to, the one I'm presenting at. But I hope you guys have had time to enjoy some of the other sessions that are going on. It's a really exciting week. Um, so thank you so much for coming to ours. Before we go too far, I want to take a quick pause and say thanks to the title sponsors. We have Colorado Technology Association, Downtown Denver Partnership, Chase Bank, uh, Comcast, and Ping Identity. They are responsible for the delicious bagels and coffee you are enjoying right now and you know, putting on the rest of this awesome week. So quick, quick thanks to them before we move into our presentation. So. Problem solving, parallels between the outdoors and digital. Hopefully that's what you're all here to listen to today. Um, Maddie and I are both really passionate about both these things, so um, without further ado, we'll jump into some more intros. That's right, so this is Heidi, Heidi Hellenbrown. Like Tasha mentioned, she works here at Effective UI and she's a UX designer. Um, we met a couple years ago at BDW down in Boulder. It's a one-year accelerator program and not only is she an awesome designer, she also is a ski racer, longtime ski racer, big climber, and all around outdoors enthusiast. Thank you, Maddie. And then Maddie here works at Project Travel, which is located in Boulder. It's a startup in Boulder. Um, and she is the lead designer there. They're doing some really cool things. She also is an outdoor enthusiast, a big rock climber, and gets into a lot of snowboarding um, on the weekends. And like she said, we met at BDW um, when we were in graduate school. So quickly, we want to get a poll of like who we have in the audience. So just by a show of hands, I want to know who's a designer in the audience. If you're a designer, can we raise hands? Cool. Um, who is works for a startup or maybe does independent contracting? Nice, nice. All right. And then agency? Anyone here from an agency? OK, nice. Maybe any, this agency? Do we have any, <laughs> yeah. Do we have any developers in the room? OK, nice, awesome. Um, and then just other people here maybe just supporting Maddie and I. OK, cool, awesome. Thanks. Sales, marketing, <laughs> cool. It looks like we have a bunch of different fields covered. Yeah, this is good. We have um, a little interactive journey later, so I'm happy to see that we have um, a, di a diverse audience. It's going to make it pretty rich, I think. So problem solving. Problem solving is super important, Maddie and I both think. Um, it really is at the foundation of our industry. Uh, to be a good design thinker and a design leader, you have to be a good problem solver. Um, and you know, pro problem solving is obviously very important, both in the outdoors and in the digital. And arguably in life, the better you are at problem solving, probably the better you're going to be at life. You know, there's that saying, work smart, don't work hard. So um, when we're super young, we have to figure out how to solve problems. A simple thing like tying your shoelaces for the first time is a problem. The first time you have to figure that out, it's hard. You can see this girl on the left is like, what? I don't want to do this. So you know, she might reorient, change her focus, and come up with a solution like this, Velcro shoes. Something you know, a little different. Ultimately, though, in our industry, every day, I'm trying to find the best solution. There is a great quote from Medium blogger Trevor Connolly, and he says, UX is simply understanding the user's problem and finding the best solution. I think this is a really good quote. Super simple. That's ultimately what, what we're there doing a lot of the time. But sometimes when we're fixated on the best solution, it's, a, it's really hard, because we're not sure what the best solution is. Often you, you know, run into situations like this, where you feel like you're trying to put a peg in a hole, or you know, you're just like carrying an elephant around on your back. You cannot figure out what the solution is. Um, often when this happens, we like to call this laser focus. And <laughs> laser focus can actually be really dangerous when you're trying to problem solve because you get obsessed with the idea of one solution. And ultimately, what you need to do is step back and switch the focus. 
So switching the focus, this can be really difficult when you're charging ahead, you've got a deadline, you're trying to figure out this problem and you're like laser focused, but ultimately you need to be like, whoa, take a step back, let's switch focus. So I have a little comic that I'm gonna share with you that helps break down how, how you can help shift the focus. So before this, I'm gonna prep you guys take you back to Rose and Jack on the Titanic, <laughs> classic film, 1997. No, but really, I want you guys, all of you guys to imagine that it's actually 1912, the, the year the Titanic sunk, and we're, we are all gonna go right now and um, save, save the day with problem sol solving and switching the focus. So, we are up above, we see what just happened. The ship has hit the iceberg, and we're standing up there, we're like, okay, the ship hit the iceberg, it's going down soon. We gotta get down there and solve this problem. And you know, as a problem solver, that you're not gonna be the one who solves the problem. Problem solving is collaborative. You're gonna need to tap into the brains of all the people on that ship. So you get down, everyone is panicked. You know, the ship is sinking in two hours. Oh my gosh, there's only 100 lifeboats and there's 50 people. The rescue ship is four hours away. Everyone's panicked. So how do, you, how do you switch their focus? How do you tap in to help you guys collaboratively problem solve this? First, you're gonna ask them, okay, describe a lifeboat without using the word lifeboat. So, you know, start thinking, okay, a wooden floating thing. And then, okay, great. Now, what are other things that are either wood or that float? Instantly, you start cultivating ideas, generating, all right, wood crates, an iceberg, other things start to pop to the surface. As this happens, you know, ideally, you have solved the problem. We saved, we saved the day. Everyone's safe until help arrives. So it's really important to take a step back and change the focus, sometimes away from your problem. Yeah, so it's too bad Heidi wasn't on the Titanic to save the day. But um, as she points out, problem solving is a journey. And journeys often are uncomfortable. You know, at first, we really do have to lift that laser focus. Maybe that's our comfortable space where things make sense. We have a process. We know it works. But maybe it's not getting us to the best solution or the best fit solution for the problem. So now I want to share with you guys a personal story of a problem in my life I dealt with last year. And it starts here. <laughs> so I climb here, like Heidi mentioned, and I actually broke my leg doing it. Bad whipper, weird accident. Um, but like the doctor told me, after six months of being on crutches, the only way to really solve, solve this issue of healing my leg, which had totally deteriorated, was to either get on the bicycle or walk. And at this time in my life, I was finishing up grad school, so if I was laser focused, what I would do is probably, you know, stay on track, go get a job, work at another agency, work at a startup, but, you know, that wasn't the solution for me. I really need to take a step back, really solve the problem of fixing my leg so I could walk again and get back to doing my best work in the office. So, like any outdoor enthusiast living here in Colorado, I decided I'm gonna walk across the country. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this route, but it's called the Camino de Santiago. There's a famous movie out there called The Way. And it's an ancient pilgrimage that goes all across Spain. You start in France, you walk over the Pyrenees, and then you walk through all these little villages and towns for a month, about 20 miles every day, until you get here, Santiago. And if you're really feeling up to it, you can walk three days more to the coast to Finisterre, which is the old end of the world. Pretty epic location. But it's a long trip, okay? It's a month. I'll prep you again. I left the country limping, maybe not in the best condition to do this. But I was on a mission to walk again. So my process for this whole journey, following these yellow arrows. There are yellow arrows all throughout Europe that lead you right into Santiago. But walking is long and monotonous and takes a long time. Although I thought, you know, yellow arrow process, I'll get there. I had the tools. I had my backpacks. I had the hiking boots, the walking sticks. You know, I was ready to go, or so I thought. Uh, I left America solo, but I picked up some teammates along the way from all over the country. And this became a community to really help me get through this process of walking 
across the country, but also, you know, they were my support team. And a lot of times we kept each other company. But other times I walked with these guys. <laughs> and sometimes I walked with these guys. One day I rode this guy. And I had a lot of liquid courage from bartenders like Paco. <laughs> yeah. The great thing about walking through Spain is that most of the time there's a, a lot of, there's many vineyards to choose from. But, you know, this was a challenge. There were a lot of ways you could go. <clears throat> Maybe the yellow arrow process was too simple. Uh, many times I would get lost in cities and the struggle was real. Like it was very uncomfortable, this journey, which I thought would be you know, just walking, like simple as that. But it was tough. It was a tough road to recovery. But at the end, like any great journey, the reward is amazing. You know, I came out with this awesome community of new friends around the world. I had this sense of achievement of walking over 500 miles across the country. And I was so into the process that I continued walking to that place, Finisterre, I mentioned earlier, to the end of the world. And you might be wondering, like, why did I just tell you about this journey? Well. Really, any good journey has three key ingredients. That is true. And the th three key ingredients, tools, team, and process. You probably heard these peppered through Maddie's story as she walked through. We believe that both in digital and outdoors, you need these three things to successfully problem solve. So tools. We've got the outdoors and the digital, a quick visual of the parallels. You're going to need you know, tools for both, for both outings. Team, we've got, you know, the epic pair of the Jamaican bobsled team over here and then the famous digital duo, Steve Jobs and Wozniak. Process, process. Who knows where you're gonna start your process? Process is a really important one. While the tools, the team, and the process are gonna change all the time and you're gonna be iterating, the process is something that is really always going to be constantly evolving. It's really important to always be checking your process. So I'm gonna share a quick story with you where I had the tools and the team, and I thought I had the process, but it was not quite in line. So uh, three years ago, I got really into backcountry skiing with my younger sister, Holly. And so, you know, we started out and first thing we did was book a hut trip because whoever, you know, backcountry skis, that's going to be one of the first things you want to do is go on a hut trip. So we book our hut trip and then being responsible, we went out and we both got our a Avalanche 1 certificate so we'd be safe hiking out there. We could ward off the avalanches or avoid them. We got our tools, you know, we got our beacons so if we get buried, we can find each other. The shovels, we can dig each other out. The probes, we can also poke down and find each other in the snow. Our backpacks, our skis, we got all the gear. So we have the tools, I have the team, we're ready. We think we have our process pretty set up. You know, we're gonna leave after work on a Friday, get to the trailhead and it's, it's four and a half miles, that's not gonna be a big deal. We'll skin up there in no time. So we get to the trailhead. This is us, this is my sister kicking off the, the hike at dusk, seven o'clock. It's four and a half miles, we don't think it's a big deal. We didn't read that it was a 2,500 foot elevation gain, which is a lot over that short amount of time. So <laughs> we're thinking in our heads, like this is gonna be no big deal. We're gonna be there in no time. Also, we did not account for the fact that we were not gonna have cell phone service. So I'm being the digital native I am, think, oh, whatever, I'll get to the trail, I'll pull up the map, we'll be up there in a jiffy. No, no map, no clue what we're gonna get ourselves into. It took us about six and a half hours from the cars to the hut that night. And it was cold, our camelback hoses were freezing, and so we couldn't really get the water, and you didn't want to stop, because the moment you stopped, your sweat would freeze. So we just were powering, we were completely lost. There were so many points, we're like, let's just turn around, we're never gonna get to the hut. Um, we persevered, and this is us at the hut the next day, chilling in the sun in the hammock. So the moral of the story is, I had the tools and I had the team. My process time was not great. I've been on multiple hut trips since this, and I've changed my process. Um, it's a lot better now, and it's gone a lot smoother. Uh, so, process is king. <laughs> yeah, process is king. So now that we've shared a couple of our personal stories with you guys, taking you through a couple of our journeys, are you guys ready to go on one together? Are you sure you're ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. 
Um, so we're gonna start here. Does anyone seen this picture before or know who these guys are? Yeah? Is that the Meru film? Yeah, so this film did premiere at Real Rock a couple weeks ago, and <laughs> it's not Meru, but it's actually, yes, anyone? Don Wall? Yeah, yes. that's right, Don Wall. <laughs> so the Don Wall is one of the hardest climbs in the world. It's this huge wall, and this guy here, Tommy Caldwell, and his partner, his teammate, um, Kevin Jorgensen, recently summited this free climbing, which is incredible. It's a really hard thing to do. These are, you know, top athletes. Tommy worked on his problem, this problem, for over seven years. He's even a local and lives up in Estes Park. There's one part of the climb where he literally has to do a dyno, which is where you jump off route to land onto another part of the route and he built the setup in his backyard to just practice that. So this is an incredible feat. So incredible. This guy, standing next to the iconic picture of Yosemite, President Obama, was tweeting at these guys, you know? They had everyone from every news crew at the base recording what was going on. They even had the New York Times digital team building out an interactive website, which we're gonna share with you. So Heidi, do you wanna take them through the website? Basically, you can see where they started from packing their tools, um, figuring out their process. You know, you can see the route they took all the way up. You can see how they stayed on the side of the cliff, on the side of the rock, day, night, they were up there for 19 days. Like this was a problem to solve. And they weren't gonna give up. They had the right tools, they had the right team, and they had been working on the process for seven years. So process is really iterative. And just in case I didn't explain enough, we're gonna show you a little video to cue you up. My name is Tommy Caldwell and I've been climbing in the valley forever. <laughs> My whole life, pretty much. Climbing in Yosemite is really cool in that we're following in the footsteps of these giants. Warren Harding in 1970 climbed the Don Wall, which is the steepest, blankest big wall maybe in the world. It was a great story. I mean, he did it in a single push. He was up there for 28 days. He sat out storms, denied rescue attempts. It was a huge thing in climbing. Why in God's green earth do you guys climb mountains? Because we're insane. <laughs> it can't be any but. other reason. <laughs> now, with this whole new era of free climbing, every generation is able to sort of re-experience the evolution of climbing. And I saw the Don Wall as the last big wall that hadn't been free climbed. <laughs> when you stand at the base and you look up, it just looks like 3,000 feet of blankness. There's nothing there, it's steep, it's intimidating. It just looks like there's no way you can climb it. 13C, 14C, 14C, 14D. All right. That's what you seek as a climber. You want to find something that looks absurd and figure out how to do it. Free climbing the Don Wall is dramatically different in terms of what it entails. I mean, Warren Harding, if he came across a blank section, he would drill a few bolts and hang on them. What I'm trying to do is not have to hang on the gear. Just work with the features of the rock, the micro little bumps, figure out how to grab them. The Don Wall, let's harder than any free climbing I've ever found. I'm grabbing these minuscule edges, jumping between holds, taking huge falls. There's really an element of like, am I gonna be able to do this? Am I ever gonna be able to do this? I mean, I've spent years of my life up there. 
driving myself crazy. I like flash back to these images of Warren Hardy. And I'm like, oh, I'm turning into that. Yosemite is and always will be the center of my climbing inspirations. I mean, after 50 years, it's still at the cutting edge. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I love this shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I think, like, as Tommy points out, he thinks he's, he's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, I think a lot of times it's like designers or um, developers or researchers or strategists, like, in the office sometimes we're like, why are we even doing this? Well, it's because we are really passionate about what we do and we want to solve these issues. And I mean, like to get a little heartfelt, I guess it's like why we're in the, why we're doing what we do in the office, but I think we also look for inspiration in the outdoors, and we really seek to, to get to that place of growth by working collaboratively. So now, that journey we promised you guys earlier, let's do this. We're going to brief you guys, and then we're going to do like a little shout out with the audience and put some answers up on the board. And really just as this is like a big ideation session, um, we're not going to go big and try to climb the Don Wall, but we thought this would be a little more relatable. So we want to walk through the tools, team, and process needed to hike a 14er with you guys. How this will work, we're going to call out one and write it on the board. And when we get to process, I think it'll be really interesting. We can put our tools and team together and get into some really weird processes. So think outdoor tools, think digital tools, think Google Glasses, think hovercrafts, think rope, you know, whatever you Don't want to think. Don't give it all away. <laughs> just prep in the audience. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it really anything, blue sky. So just start calling out um, any tools that you think we're going to need to hike a 14er here in Colorado. If anyone's done that, you might know from personal experience. Yeah, just say them loud. Celebratory beers. Beers. Beers for the top, bottom, and all the way through. Good call. <laughs> Food, OK. <laughs> I like this. It's just going to be a party. Water. Rain jacket. Oh, rain jacket, good one. Trekking poles. Trekking poles. What was that? Dog. Yeah. Your dog, nice. That's almost like team. I don't know if that's a tool. I think that might be team. That's okay, yeah, we'll get it. Like, he yeah. goes both ways. Yeah. No way you go that. Sometimes he carries your shit. What? What about the 14er itself? The 14er. 14er. Yeah. Is that, that might, that might what, play into do process. You like tools, team, and process. What do you think? Process. Yeah, process. And then I heard someone over here said a sign for at the top to hold. Navigation equipment. Navigation equipment. What kind of equipment do you use? Definitely a tool. Yes, ma'am. What spot? Camera. Selfie stick. Selfie stick. Selfie drone. Yes. A selfie just for a drone just for selfies. Anyone I missed out there? Socks. socks. Hell yeah, the right socks. Yeah, well, Ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Ibuprofen and a sleeping bag. You might need one. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Old skin. Ooh, mole skin. Oh yeah, for those blisters. I don't see a camera on there. We do have a selfie stick, but <laughs> we have no cell phone. <laughs> First aid. First aid, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we might need some shoes. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, that's definitely. a good one. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. I always need that. <laughs> Glasses, sunglasses. Uh, what style? Raven. 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 Wayfair? <laughs> OK. What a date pack to put all this in. Yeah, backpack's a good, good idea. Thinking. Yeah. I have some gloves. Gloves. I think we've had some. We need some gloves. Speakers. Yeah. 
a jammy pack or a jam box. Jammy pack. Jammy pack. Jammy pack. More drugs. Wet wipes, more drugs. We'll just really underline that one. <laughs> wipes. Team, no one wants like a horse to ride up the mountain on? Yeah, let's move on over to team. I think this backpack's pretty heavy. <laughs> Hiking partner. Cool. Partners. <laughs> The team's a little more obvious. <laughs> um, no one has any crazy dream of hiking a 14er with someone. Robots. R Ranger service. Ranger, Ranger service, yeah. yes, good. Masseuse for when you're done. Definitely. Oh, I like this, yeah. Uh, my film crew to document my only 14 Film crew. <laughs> <laughs> Prep for you, help get your stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> a whole prep team. Yeah, sort of a chauffeur. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's say the other hikers, because normally you pass them and you kind of start encouraging each other. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Other hikers, that's a really good one. They lie to you sometimes, too. <laughs> You're almost <laughs> there. So <laughs> true, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Famous last words. I think we need pants for tools. Oh yeah, we better get pants over You don't there. like to go pantsless? <laughs> <laughs> pants on. Yeah, put some pants on. <laughs> Willpower. Yeah. Yeah. Willpower might be like one of those That'd process. That be like a process, process kind of thing. Team. Yeah. All right, so should we move over to process? Ooh. Craft Brewers. Oh, yeah. Sponsors? Sponsors. <laughs> Anyone in here getting sponsored to hike this 14er? I think all of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where you get your equipment. Facebook to show off all your photos. Barista for the morning. Barista, yeah. hell yeah. I like the way we're climbing this. <laughs> all right. So now this gets into a little more complicated territory. How are we going to put these tools and team together, put, apply a process to get us to the top? Wake up your team. OK. Yeah. Just do a Bear Grylls. Alarms. <laughs> do a what? Who? Bear Grylls. Watch Bear Grylls. Prepare by watching Bear Grylls. OK, cool intro. OK, intro music. <laughs> Let someone know where you're going. Ah, that's a good one. Mm, yeah. Plan the route. Location. Plan the route. Share location. Plan the route. That's Screenshot really good. The, uh, the map. So Screenshot the, the map. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Shop for all of your tools. Shop. All right. Good idea. Buy the tools. Planning. Shopping. Backup strategy. Backup strategy. I like that. Mm, yeah. Plan you know, B. If the weather comes in, what are you going to do? Yeah. Friends to poke holes in your plan. Oh, yeah, I like that. Ooh. Proof it. Proof the yeah. plan. Proof the plan. Practice gets fit. Yes, that is such an important part of the process. Practice. <laughs> oh, I thought you said breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on the process, too. <laughs> Practice, eat breakfast. <laughs> Check all the equipment. Yeah, make sure that equipment's still working. <laughs> yeah, make sure you have enough stuff to get down. Yeah, good point. Make sure you have enough supplies. <laughs> Charge phone. Charge phone. Yeah. Supply stock. Don't depend on the phone. Yeah. Don't be dependent on the phone. <laughs> for, for tools, can we get a base jump in parachute? Because I'm not going to walk down that fourteen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, parachute. Or do you like to hang glide? Yeah, that'd be sweet. Also, like, wing suit. Squirrel suit, yeah. <laughs> and if we could add squirrels to the team, that'd be good. <laughs> like your own um, squad of squirrels to, like, fly down with you? I feel like that's connected to plan B. <laughs> that's my plan A. <laughs> Any other, like, thoughts on getting up to a 14er? Leave very early. Yes. Yeah, leave early. Make sure your gas tank is full. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get stuck at the trailhead. Check weather. 
Good call. Yeah, always check the weather. So check in with your partners, because not everyone's going to say if their feet are hurting. Yeah. Check with your teammates along the way. <clears throat> Starting point. Make sure you have a car that can get to the trailhead. Yeah, four-wheel drive. Transportation. That's totally important. <laughs> or a working thumb. <laughs> Cool, this was awesome. So obviously, we couldn't get to the top of the 14er without having all three things, tools, team, and process. Um, thanks for going through that exercise with us. We just wanted to show how important it is to really have all three elements, all key elements, get you to that solution. So why, why journey at all? You know, why do we go out and do these things? Often, as we pointed out, when you take the journey, you find an unexpected solution. So, you know, you know we might be halfway up the 14er and we have the tools, the team, and the process, but weather comes in. So you have to, you know, reroute and it might end up getting to this incredible lookout that you've never been to before that is like the highlight of your life. We have a quote that we want to wrap up and it says, solutions, if they exist at all, is surprising and not obvious. So Daniel Pink said this, and we really resonate with this quote, um, and I think it's an important one to remember with problem solving. Um, the solutions are gonna come from unexpected places. You kind of have to step back and remember that. Yeah, so thanks for taking the journey with us, and hopefully you'll take this, go accomplish more things, both in the office and your outdoor life, and we'll be around if you wanna talk to us afterwards. They did a great job putting all three together. It inspires you to do something else. I think it was awesome, the parallel, and I think metaphor is a powerful way of sharing ideas with people, so it's pretty cool. Different strategies on how I'm going to address problem solving in the future. I think it was really good to incorporate those three tools. That thought process, Heidi and Maddie walked us through, was something really approachable, fun and engaging. Uh, and when you bring that team along and, and you have those kind of motivated, inspiring people around you, yeah, they did a great job. Fantastic.